Hello and welcome to our tutorial on Spriting for Doom using GIMP. This is Gustavo and today we are going to teach you how to create your first sprite project from scratch. Doom is a 1993 first person shooter game by ID Software, but you probably already know that if you came for the video. Its engine is, and this is an important and unskippable remark, a header astute, the speed primitive engine where actors and other objects are represented not by 3D models, but by sprites. Exactly, the same still I made that power Super Mario also power Doom, except some actors like enemies have 8 sprites per frame, so they have angles and therefore a 3D illusion. Today we are going to make some for your next Doom Spotting project. If you do not know how to use the sprites we are going to make, educate and delegate such endeavors to another, so they will make good use of these. The first task we have to perform in this image editor is to create a new image. This is usually not a difficult task since we can just hit Ctrl N which will open the image creation dialog for us conveniently. The sprites are tiny, so pick a correspondingly tiny size for our new image in the magnitude of the dozens. We will make a decorative computer, so just pick 30 for width and 30 for height. As I said earlier, many Doom objects like enemies have multiple sprites per frame, one per angle, to give a 3D illusion. But some, mostly spheres and simple decorations, simply don't, since they would either be useless to create or would take useless space in a 1993 floppy disk scale. Our computer is just one sprite only as well, so let's just make the single 30 by 30 sprite for tutorial purposes. So first you will need GIMP, of course. This is GIMP's new version, which I believe is This third the third image. And we also can use the options and make it transparent. Like this. Then you want to make a rectangle and fill it with gray to the rectangle selection. You must use the selection tool on the top left of the toolbox. It can also be selected using the R shortcut. Try to pick a good shade of gray, which is the leftmost column of the selector which is by clicking this color here for the front so you try to pick a good shade which is not too light nor too dark for a computer for the 90s in this case I try to make it dark so I pick something like this to make it stylish for the 90s now let's try to make a, this round I use the select round rectangle and pick good radius like part 7 for a TRT screen and you using shift V which is the Q2 or the bucket in the toolbox and then shift V to make sure that it will fill the whole selection. Then we must use the alpha threshold to make sure that there are no semi-transparent pixels, only transparent and opaque. This is good. Now let's start to shade this frame or screen using the super first the secret is to pick a brush for shading. Okay, you just you must have this overlay mode for blending, low opacity, very low opacity, and incremental, uh, incremental. Uh, what is the in English? Whatever, incremental thing. Then select it to the selection thing. You have a Small size like and no true and begin to draw your shades. Make the light in the top right. Try to avoid lighting too much because this is a dark computer and dark things aren't so shiny. Like this is better I guess. A bit more opacity so I can actually draw with sanity, not having to do it all the time. But I like this. Draw carefully so as to not miss a shade. If you miss something, you can undo it by hitting Ctrl Z and hate do it by hitting Ctrl Y. It's better than them as paint. Look, I can undo lots of several actions and do them all again. In my paint, you could only undo one thing at once. Just make this good again. I mean, good. 
wrong. And he's not using. Put him here. In the corner, you try to make it a, bit, you know, a little bit lighter to simulate shiny. This would be a metal computer like right? Stage 1. Now let's pick black and shadow this part here. But a light shadow. But our environment is probably a bit of light. Now we will pick the center and do another selection box and run it again. This time a little bit more radius to compensate for the smaller box. We will make it almost black, not that black. A little bit over black here in in the color selection, make it look like this. Maybe a bit more black from here. Good. Now we can only we only have to do a little bit of light in this corner here, a little bit. So we ensure that there is um, enough illusion that this is 3D or something like that. Yeah, this is working just very slightly. Put the Slightly. <laughs> now you only have not to do the base, which is the actual computer thing, the bottom here. Let's make it a bit small, but not too small, and then we fill it with, with another dark color, but not so dark color, and then we pick black and do the shadow to the left, and white to the shadow to the right. And then we pick black again to do another shadow, but not so dark, the top. Exactly, because the shadow of the screen, remember? Now let's do the light of the computer. Like, it's on. Yes, it is on. Is it error? No, it's not error. It's running a uh, DOS prompt. You've seen a while. Is it uh, turbo mode? No, it is not. Here. There. Is it working? Yes. Good, we have a few lights. Now we will do a power button, which is as simple as picking up a light gray and using the pen, which is the N tool, one of size, one pixel only, and pull. Bam, we have a power button. Let's make it a bit, a bit not so light. So there. And here too, but it's a large power button. Now we all need to do the prompt, just prompt. For this we will do the following. New layer. Click this button to create a new layer. Pick a layer name, it's the screen dot. Okay, now we can only have to do the prompt itself. See or black. Very shadish, this needs here and here and we have a little prompt here cool let's play a little bit with whatever it looks a bit but why have I made the new layer because now we can blur it and make it look like it's shiny not that much we are not like in a face of joy or anything that's better now we can only save it so a B0 because I already made this before. But yeah, B0. Two sprites here. Good. Now you can save. Using Ctrl E you can export it to PNG. Ctrl Shift E to export it to the new file if you haven't already. Otherwise, in the, if you haven't already, you will just use Ctrl E and you just still pick a file. So now you can close. This is our tutorial, thank you for watching, bye!